Do you think that the Trump presidency is scarier than a Stephen King novel? <laughs> Short answer to that is, yes, I do. I do think it's scarier. You're not the voice of the people. I am the voice of the people. I will be your voice. I was sort of convinced that it was possible that a politician would arise who was so outside the mainstream and so willing to say anything that he would capture the imaginations of the American people. They take him as a joke at first because he has these rallies and uh, he throws hot dogs to the crowd. and says, uh, when Greg Stilson's elected, you're gonna say, hot dog, we got a real mover and shaker at last. You're gonna be so tired of winning. Crazy stuff that nobody would possibly believe, or so we thought, until Donald Trump came along. The man is a clown. He goes charging around the speaking platform like that at every rally. So people want a giggle or two. Even more, they want to thumb their noses at a political establishment that doesn't seem able to solve anything. When Greg Stilson actually gains a following, he has a, uh, a cadre of bikers who support him. You know, they're tough guys, right? Where are the bikers for Trump? And they're at the rallies and they're there to make sure that nobody heckles Greg Stilson. Get him out of here, get out. Knock the crap out of him, would you, seriously? The man had the high, hard, pumping delivery of a revival preacher. You could see a fine spray of spittle from his lips as he talked. So I announced that I'm running for president. What are we going to do in Washington? Throw the bums out. A tremendous roar of approval ripped out of the crowd. We're going to drain the swamp. Drain the swamp. My worry at the time that I wrote The Dead Zone was that somebody like Greg Stilson might actually get elected and rise through the ranks, become president of the United States and start World War III. The missiles are flying. Had I known, really known the future, uh, I could have had Greg say, uh, well, I've got a button and it's bigger than your button. My button is bigger than yours and my button works. My destiny. The first scene in the book is Greg Stilson at the beginning of his career, and he's selling Bibles, actually. He's a door-to-door -door salesman. The Bible! Nothing beats the Bible. Nothing beats the Bible, not even the art of the deal. He's a huckster from the word go, and in that sense, uh, he's got a lot of that, that Trump uh, genome in him. And the first thing that you see Greg do uh, is he comes out to a house th that's empty and the dog uh, is outside and barks at him and then snags his leg. And uh, uh, Greg Stilson kicks the dog to death in the dooryard. The letters I got after that, oh my God, you know, it doesn't matter how many people die in books. The stand, you know, 98% of the world's population gets decimated, but they care about the dogs, man. You do love your dogs, don't you? You're the talk of the town. Because I got my head bashed in and I'm still here to talk about it. Because you have the power of second sight. Like me. I don't know about magic. I always called it The Shining. I don't think that I necessarily predicted Donald Trump when I wrote The Dead Zone. I know that American voters have always had a real attraction to outsiders with the same kind of right-wing America first policy. And if that reminds people of Trump, uh, I can't be sorry because it was a character that I wrote. It was a boogeyman of mine, and I never wanted to see him actually on the American political scene, but 
we do seem to have a Greg Stilson as President of the United States. You are an expert on books and bestsellers. Should people read the Mueller report? Yes, I think people should read it. One of the things that you're going to be surprised at is how readable it is.